Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amina. I would absolutely love it if you subscribed and press the bell button to stay notified for my videos. I think it was last year, maybe it was 2018, I did a series of videos that were talking about the PhD interview. This video is going to follow that up and talk about the questions that you should ask the supervisor during the interview. Now don't forget, as with any job, you are not the one that is solely being interviewed. In fact, you should also be interviewing the professor, the supervisor, the group leader to ask some questions about what type of environment that you are going to be entering in to in the UK for three to four years or if that's in America it could be up to six to seven years I luckily had an amazing experience in my PhD I had the greatest supervisor I had such a supportive lab um, I had a supportive secondary supervisor and it was, it was just a great experience, but I have heard stories from many people that had the complete polar opposite experience. So grab a pen and paper and let's get straight into it. So the first question is asking how long an average student, PhD student takes for each part of their PhD. In the UK, a PhD program is typically three to four years. Those three to four years are kind of split into many parts of the PhD. So typically the first year will be spent doing preliminary work, learning the method, maybe deciding exactly which direction you, you want to take with your project. Um, sometimes after the first year, the project is completely overturned. So that first year, don't be too stressed if you don't get any results or any data. So that's about one year, I would say. And then two years after that, so up to the third year, would be the bulk of your work, where you're really testing the hypothesis, you are doing a number of different methods, um, you're collaborating, and you're really working towards building that story that you're going to write up towards the end. And then the last three to four, up to six months, is writing the thesis and kind of tying the loose ends up. Um, once you've decided exactly what storyline you are going to take. A good question would be to ask how long does the PhD take and how long would you spend on each of these different parts of the PhD? Um, because I've seen some I've seen some students spend two years testing things out and then really rushing their PhD um, in six months, which isn't ideal. So it's good to know what your supervisor has in mind. Of course, this may completely change once you actually begin. The second question is about the guidance that you will be receiving from your supervisor or from whoever it is that's going to be helping you out and your primary contact. Now, your supervisor should be your primary contact. It should be the person that you see once a week, twice a week, you know, once a month, whatever it is. But sometimes I've seen labs where there's one supervisor who has a huge, huge group with many postdocs and many PhD students. And it's very unrealistic that you have really close contact with that person. Like when I started, there was one postdoc and three or four PhD students. So we had a very, very close um, relationship and I was actually taught firsthand by my supervisor, which was ideal. Um, but do ask about that because if you're in a lab where the supervisor hasn't got much time and there isn't a postdoc, you are basically going to be struggling to learn all the experiments yourself. And it is really tricky and you will spend weeks and days and months doing things that isn't just isn't working out and it will get very very frustrating this is a bit different in in the social sciences or in other in other phd programs but in the biological sciences you really just need someone to show you that one time how to do the experiment and how to run the gel or how to read a, a graph or whatever it is the microscope work and then after that you can go on to do it independently but just initially you really do need that support so ask about it how many postdocs are there in the lab um, who will be guiding me in the beginning? Who will be teaching me what I need to know at the start? How often will I be meeting with you? You can also ask how many PhD students does he or she supervise? Again, that will give you a good idea of how many PhD students are, be, are going to be pulling his or her arm. If your supervisor says that there are only three PhD students, that's a pretty nice number. You'll be well supported and you'll have other students to kind of talk about and discuss your issues with. So think about what kind of environment you want to be in. Another thing to ask is about uh, lab meeting days. So is there a specific day that the whole lab gets together and meet up. For us, it was Tuesday afternoons. Every Tuesday afternoon, we'd always meet up as a lab, get together in a room, and present. one person would present their work that day. And it encourages conversation. It shows you what your colleagues are doing, what your fellow PhD students are doing, because although you're all in the same lab group, you're not all going to be doing the same thing. In my lab anyway, we were all doing very different things. We had physics backgrounds, we had chemistry backgrounds, we had biology backgrounds like me, and we were all working on very different things, albeit all to do with the actin cytoskeleton, um, but actually it was very, very different in techniques, the cell types, 
the experiments, the hypothesis, it was all very, very different. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you're all kind of doing your own thing and you don't really know what each other is doing. A good sign would be if your supervisor says, yes, actually we meet once every week or once every two weeks. Um, that shows that there is that co cooperation and collaboration within the lab. This is probably the most important, I would say, one of the most important, depending on obviously your situation, but funding. Most PhD programs in the biological sciences are funded, so that won't be an issue. However, the amount of funding and what funding is dedicated to will differ between programs. So you want to make sure that the supervisor has enough funding for you for the three-year program, or all four years, depending on what you've signed up for, and enough funding for you to write your thesis up. Now, this is one thing that I think a lot of people tend to miss out on because they think it's like so far down the road. It's something that they shouldn't really worry about at the moment. But actually, when you come down to it and you need to write your thesis, the last thing you want to do is to have to go and get a part-time job or to start work when you're writing your thesis. You want to be able to spend dedicated time writing your thesis, but also know that you are being paid at the same time. Luckily, with my supervisor, um, he was given a three. He was given enough money for three years, but he saved money throughout, so he could then pay me for another six months. So in fact, I was actually paid for three years to do my research, and then six months to then write up. We also want to ask about conferences. Does this money? Does this funding support me to go to? Uh, another country abroad would i be able to go to conferences everything from flights from the hotel food travel costs just everything needs to be paid for when you go on a conference unless you're willing to self-fund all of these aspects should be covered by your grants so it's a good question to ask sort of how many approximately how many conferences do you think i can go on in a year um, and if your supervisor says you know one big conference maybe one kind of national one one international one that's really good I, was, I managed to go to Paris a few times, I went to Germany, and I would say actually, looking back, that was the one thing that I probably regret the most, not take, making the most of it and not travelling more um, uh, to go to conferences. At the time, um, you, it does take a lot of time, you have to make a poster, you have to present the poster when you're there, um, and then obviously taking off like a couple of days, um, it does disrupt your work quite a bit, so I think at the time I just thought eh, it's not really worth it to go to too many conferences, but now looking back, I really wish that I went on more. Another question to ask ask is if you will be part of a graduate school. Now at UCL, um, every PhD student is a graduate student and they're part of the graduate school, which means that you have access to courses, to seminars, to meet a number of credits. So I think it was like a hundred credits or something um, and you have to go to, on courses every single year. And the courses were, you can choose whatever courses you want. You can go on a business course if you want, a language course. Um, I did a few sort of soft skill courses. I also did a statistics course as well because at the time I was doing some stats in my analysis and so I thought that would be quite handy for my analysis as well. I mean this isn't the most important thing that I would use to consider if I wanted to accept the program or not purely because um, it was a good, it was interesting but it's not something that you can't get for example on YouTube or you can't do yourself but it's just interesting to know if that's something that you have on offer. Now this is probably the most important thing that I'm going to tell you in this whole video um, which is to ask to speak to current students. During the interview, you should be offered this anyway without you asking, and I think that's a very good sign if you're offered it. If you're offered it without asking, then I say that you're probably good to go. However, if you're not offered it, then just ask. Say, do you mind if I speak to current students? Of course, the supervisor is going to sell you their lab and tell you the amazing things they're doing, um, but you won't necessarily get the perspective from the other side from speaking to them alone. So it's really important to speak to the PhD students that are in the lab at the time. Again, I've heard of stories where PhD students have had terrible experiences and have passed that on to students that have come in for interviews and said, don't start in this lab. And that student has still started in that lab and has hated it. Um, so take, if, if a student, if a PhD student in the lab that you've spoken to tells you it's not the greatest place to be, then take that seriously. It isn't a joke to be in an environment for five days a week, sometimes seven days a week, depending on how much lab work you have to do. It isn't ideal, it's horrible, it's depressing, and you definitely wanna make sure that you've asked the right questions um, to the right people. So when you speak to them, just ask them what the work-life balance is like, do they like the lab, 
um, what they get up to on the weekends, what they do, what, how, what time they come in, things like that, just general questions. Just general questions that can spark a conversation, how their PhD is going. You just want to speak to them and see what vibe you're getting and also don't forget that this is the person that you are going to be spending every day, you know, all the time with in the same space. And it's important that you see yourself um, forming a friendship with that person as well. So it's a good idea to speak to one or two PhD students, if not all of them. This question is about career progression. Ask a supervisor if you have something that you're particularly interested in, say for example, you want to go into lecturing or be a postdoc or industry or whatever it is that you want to do, ask them how many people from this lab um, went into a postdoc straight after or what were the career trajectories that students from this lab took after they completed their PhD. And just to get an idea of what kind of lab it is, is it a lab where they're very sort of academic and they want to all go into postdocs or is it something where is it a lab where everyone just goes and does their own thing when they finish my lab was very mixed you've got some people that are in consultancy at the moment some that are in education some that are doing postdoc some in, in academic and uh, kind of scientific writing law it's a very mixed bag which is quite nice because it means that we were all given the tools to be able to go into the world and do whatever job we want to do and we're not pressurized to have to stay in academia which you may or may not want to do Ask about other opportunities, so things like teaching, um, if you want to do a bit of teaching on the side, um, teaching undergraduate students, things like that, ask if those opportunities exist and how you can do them if possible and if you're even allowed to do them. Some supervisors are really strict and would say you have to focus on your PhD whereas others are a bit, a bit more okay with you doing a few things here or there on the side. Um, that would help with your own career interests. Ask about the work-life balance and any expectations that you feel like align with your um, lifestyle. So for example, a good one to ask is what time am I expected to come in and leave? Like how long do I need to spend every day? Um, if they say you have to be in at nine, you have to leave at five, that's a nine to five job. If you're okay with that, then that's fine. But the beautiful thing about academia is that it's very flexible. And in my lab, and most labs are quite like this, there isn't necessarily a time where you have to be in and a time where you have to kind of stay up till. It's more about the quality of your work and making sure that you've actually completed what you should have completed that week or that month. I would typically come in around nine and leave for about five. But if I had more work to do, I'd stay till six. If I was a bit more tired, I'll come in at 10 or 11. I mean, there really wasn't a fixed time that we had to come in unless we had like a meeting or something particular that we had to complete on that day. Um, so I like that. And it's really up to you what you decide, but make sure that you are aware of those timings if there are any. Depending on what cell type you use, there are some cell types like stem cells, for example, or animal work where you have to come in on the weekend if it so happens that that experiment falls where you have to do some induction or something. Um, it might, may fall on a Saturday and you just have to come in. Um, when I was in my master's at Imperial, we were using, we were doing animal work and the animals had to be fed every single day. So someone had to come in and that was your project, that was going to be you, um, had to come in every single day, even just for five minutes to feed and to image the cells. You have to image them every single day. So <laughs> that's, again, it's just something to ask. The projects may sound amazing, but coming in on Saturday and Sunday is not amazing. I promise you, it's not worth it. Um, so again, just ask, is that something that's expected of me? Is there any methods or you know experiments where I may have to come in on the weekends? There were many weekends that I came in, don't get me wrong, I went in on many Saturdays and Sundays, but that was my choice. That was because I thought if I don't come in on the weekend, that means that I then have to start on Monday and it pushes the experiment till Thursday or Friday as opposed to starting on Saturday and being able to run the experiment on Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, yeah, just ask if that's uh, something that your methods may um, entail. And the last one kind of feeds onto what I was just saying about animal work. Ask if there is any animal work included and if you are against that um, ethically, morally, whatever it is, religiously, then just make that clear. Then at least you know that before accepting the programme. Um, I personally am not against it, but I just don't like doing it purely because, I mean, it's just not nice, is it? Just, it's just not nice dealing with all of that. Um, if you've done animal work before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's just not nice. I'm not against it. I do think it is required in science um, to a limit, but it's just not something that I would want to spend four years dealing with uh, personally. So do check and make sure that you're not 
or you are or whatever your preference is um, dealing with animals because again like I said that is something that you can't escape once you've started the project if that's your cell type if that's your model then that's what it is um, there's no getting around it so yeah I, I hope that was helpful for any upcoming interviews I know a lot of you have interviews coming up very soon um, so do write down these questions and think about which ones you want to ask you don't have to ask all of them but think about which ones may be relevant to you a PhD program becomes your life it becomes your it becomes everything that you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep for three to four or five years or more so it is really important that you consider every single option um, and not just accept a program purely because it's a PhD uh, it won't that that novelty will wear off very quickly when you're coming in the lab on the weekends and when you've got a horrible supervisor in a horrible environment um, so I hope that was helpful don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video bye